Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is sign. S-I-G-N. What is it? Sign. That's sing, isn't it? S-I-G-N? S-I-S-I... No, S-I-G-N is sign. Oh. <laughs> that much I'm sure of so oh. far. Oh. <laughs> okay, I was just checking to see if you were alive. Huh? You bet your life! <laughs> It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America, who invite you to see and drive the delightful, the lovely DeSoto for 1956. The time has come, it's very clear. The car you wanted is really here. It's delightful, it's the lovely, it's DeSoto. You'll understand the reasons why. For once you drive it, you want to buy. It's delightful, it's the lovely, it's DeSoto. And now, here he is, the one, the only... One of nature's noblemen. Oh, that's me. Well, here I am again with a thousand dollars for one of our couples. And if any of them say the secret word, the duck will fly down and pay them a hundred dollars, a hundred and one dollars. Now, what were you saying? Well, Groucho... You uh, haven't been saying anything. No, I was waiting. Even when you're talking. <laughs> Groucho, how'd you You're like... a fine-looking fellow, <laughs> Uh, Groucho, Mrs. Uh... I get a lot of fan mail about you. you know. Oh, you do? Yeah. They want me to get Don Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> Groucho, uh, I think we better go on. Mrs. Martha Box and Mr. Thurman Wade are waiting to talk to you. Oh. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. You say the secret word, you'll divide $101. It's a common word, something you see every day. Now, leave us see here. Mrs. Marta Box and Mr. Thurman Wade. Mr. Wade, we ought to get along swimmingly, huh? Up to our ears. Yes. Oh, I see. Where are you from, uh, Wade, uh, Thurman? I'm from a small town in Virginia. Oh. Martinsville. Oh. It's in the foothills of the Blue Ridge. It's a small manufacturing town. Can you sing that song about the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia? I could. Well, could you sing a few bars of it? In the Blue Ridge Mountains mm, of Virginia. No. Well, uh, why did you leave Virginia? On account of this song I just sang? No, I joined the Navy. And I haven't been back to live except for a short period oh. since. Well, is there a Navy in Virginia? No, we're, <clears throat> being on the Atlantic coast, we're part of the United States Navy there. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> Are you married? Yes, I have a wife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Getting some very careful answers from Thurman here. And you're uh, Marta Box? Yes, that's uh, right. Do you have any little uh, packing cases at home? No, unfortunately, I don't. You don't, huh? Where are you from, Marta? I'm from Reykjavik, Iceland. You're from Iceland? Yes. Well, shiver my timbers. I'm freezing already. <laughs> oh, it isn't so cold. Uh, do the people live in igloos in Iceland? No, actually, it's a very modern town. It's, oh. uh, You're not an Eskimo, eh? Huh? No, I don't think I'm any relation, actually, to them. No. We're of uh, Nordic descent. And you're single? No, I'm married. Oh, you're married. Mm -hmm. well, how'd you meet your husband, Marta? Is well, he an we Icelander, too, or is he just a polar bear? No, he was uh, an officer in the Air Force during the war. Oh. Now, what did your husband say to you when he proposed? Do you remember? I don't recall that he said anything. I remember he gave me a ring, and I just said yes. He gave you a... What do you mean? Did he call you on the telephone? No. We were coming home from a dance. You were coming home from a dance? Mm -hmm. And that's all there was to it? He gave you the that's ring? That's all there was to it. He didn't say, uh, will you marry me? Or, Do you no, love me? I don't remember it, and I cannot pin him down either. He well, can't has he ever it, said that he loves you? Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm oh, just curious. Oh, yeah. All the Where time. Is, you know, all the time? 
Doesn't he ever say when is dinner ready or anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, usually I'm Why the one who says when is ready. clean my room or something? Huh? <laughs> Who's you? been using my toothbrush? You just keep saying all day long, I love you? No. That can get no pretty problem. dreary after a while, can it? We talk about books, and we talk a little bit about science, and oh. we read poetry. We do oh, a lot of nice. things. Oh, that's nice. You have a very idyllic existence. Mr. Wade, what kind of work do you do now that you've left the Virginia Navy? Well, I'm still with the Navy, however, in a civilian capacity. Oh, and what uh, is your capacity? About two quarts? <laughs> a couple of jiggers. Oh. <laughs> I'm a training supervisor of civilian employees at the Long Beach, California Naval Shipyard. Uh, evenings, I teach speed reading at Long Beach City College. Speed reading? Yes. Well, well you mean you teach people to read faster? That's just about the sum of it. Oh, I should think just getting people to read at all would be a, an achievement. <laughs> that often is. Well, uh, what is the normal speed for reading? I can read a billboard going 60. Is that about par? Mm, I mean, if it's just one word on it, I mean. The adults with whom I work, starting reading speed is about 235 words a minute. 235? Well, that sounds like a lot of words to me. How fast do you read? Well, it depends on the material, Groucho. You shift gears. Well, let's say it was the Kinsey report. <laughs> Slowly. Slowly. Yeah. I have been tested at about 6,120 words a minute. Is that RPM, revolutions? Like words per minute. Oh. WPM. Oh. I didn't know there were 6,000 words. <laughs> How do you explain the fact you can read so much faster than the average dolt? <laughs> probably haven't met the average dolt. <laughs> However... You, you, you have. You may not be aware of it, but you have. <laughs> well, he didn't identify himself as such. Well, I thought you would gather it by this time. <laughs> but this reading thing is a matter of training. It is, huh? Even you could learn to read faster. <laughs> you mean uh, I could read a thousand words a minute? Easily. That's impossible. I can't read at all now. <laughs> Well, how do you teach people to read faster? Do you touch a match to the top of the page? No. Uh, <laughs> I haven't tried that. I might. <laughs> teach, uh, you first, you teach them to... You teach them to see more in a short... That's known as a literary hot foot. <laughs> <laughs> teach them to see more in a shorter period of time to... You keep mentioning Seymour. Is that a friend of yours? <laughs> as an S double E. Oh. Well, go on with this. I didn't mean to interrupt you. You teach them to see more in a shorter period of time and teach them to understand what they see, not to stumble over these unfamiliar words. I see. How long would it take you to read, uh, let's say, Tolstoy's War and Peace? That's over a thousand pages. Oh, that would probably take an hour and a half. Well, how do you know you could read it that fast? Well, I've read similar books. I read, I think, uh, From Here to Eternity in about 54 minutes. Yeah. I read Photoplay magazine the other night, and it took me three hours and ten minutes. <laughs> so, I mean, you ought to be a wizard at our quiz game, and there's a good chance to find out. Remember, we start you off with $100, and if you miss a question, you lose half of your bankroll. Is that clear? That's and you have one answer between you, and don't anybody shout out until you discuss it with your partner. You selected science and medicine. Remember, the more the question is, the harder it is. Now, what do you want to start with? 50, 60, Shoot the works. 100? Dr. William Rentgen's contribution to science and medicine is in everyday use. The name is spelled R-O-E-N-T-G-E-N. What did Rentgen discover? X-rays. That is right. That's right. X-rays. <laughs> And you now have $200. Now you have $200. What are you going to go for? $90. $90? What is the most malleable of all metals? Lead. Lead. No. It says gold here. Well, you lost half the 200 You still have $100. All right. Now, don't get discouraged. We've got two more questions. You want to go for 80 now? Yes. What do you call the large veins on either side of the neck? Jugular veins. That's right. Yeah, jugular veins is right. Huh? You now have one hundred eighty dollars. 
Now, what are you going to go for? Seventy, isn't it? Seventy? The latest says seventy. Okay. What do you call the force that impels matter outward from the center of rotation? Centrifugal. Hmm? Centrifugal. Yes. Centrifugal force. Centrifugal force is right. You're a real smart guy. <laughs> You wind up with two hundred fifty dollars. Well, thanks, and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Thank you, Groucho. It's news, big news, and here's the headline: Sales of the delightful, the lovely DeSoto for nineteen fifty-six have doubled. It's a great story of acceptance by the American people of this spectacular new car, the forward-look DeSoto. What's more, it means that now you can afford to move up to the DeSoto class, to this beautiful, powerful, modern car yourself. Here's why. Because sales have practically doubled, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer is able to offer you a terrific deal right now. Stop in at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers tomorrow and see for yourself how this success story brings the star of the medium price field into your price range. Stop in and get the feel of DeSoto's sensational push-button driving. Tremendous takeoff power. It's power steering and power brakes. For the best buy of 56, drive and price a DeSoto before you decide. Mrs. Carmen Altamari and Mr. Philip Schutz are waiting to talk to you, so folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word and divide $101. It's a common word. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mrs. Carmen Altomar. Altomari. Altomari, that's yes, you. Yes, sir. Well, you're a fine-looking woman, Carmen. Uh, Thank you. Uh, do you mind if I call you Carmen? Not a bit. You can call me preferred. That's a stock market, common and preferred. <laughs> How old are you, Carmen? And if you don't care to divulge this information, it's all right with me. Eh? Sixty-eight, Groucho. Sixty-eight? Yes, sir. Well, you're a very young-looking <laughs> sixty-eight. Thank you for the compliment. Where are you from, uh, Carm? I'm from Italy. And, and you're from where? From Italy. You're I'm from Italy? Italy? Yes. How long have you been uh, married, uh, Carmen? And a few days I'm going to be a, uh, a golden wedding anniversary. Golden wedding? Yes, sir. Well, that's wonderful. Do you have anything to show for the last 50 years? I've got a five children. Uh, five children? Huh? Yes, sir. Well, stick around, Carmen. I'll be back. Right now I'd like to talk to this gentleman here. <clears throat> I hope you don't think I accidentally ignored you. I really did it deliberately. Uh, <laughs> just relax. Uh, yes. Uh, you're a Philip Schutz? That's right, Groucho. You don't mind my snide remarks? No, do you? no, Groucho, no. I know you wouldn't. What, what kind of work do you do? Well, I'm a lawyer, Groucho. I a lawyer? Me. Yes, sir. No wonder you don't care what I say. <laughs> right now, you've got enough witnesses for a $50,000 slander suit. <laughs> with two pair of pants. <laughs> What kind of a lawyer are you? Are you well, I have a general practice in the two major fields of law, Groucho. Two major fields? Well, what are the two major fields of law? Honest and crooked? And... Groucho. <laughs> criminal and civil law. That's what I said. Honest and crooked. Huh? <laughs> well, when you practice uh, criminal law, do you keep a civil tongue in your head? Uh... Sometimes it's expedient, Groucho. No. Well, what, what makes a successful lawyer, in your opinion, Philip? Well, I, I think it's a combination of Preparation, patience, perseverance, and wealthy clients. <laughs> You're a very practical man, Philip. Uh, try to be Are they still wealthy after you get through representing them? Well, that is a matter of opinion, Groucho. I mean, there's a difference of opinion between you and the client. Eh? Frequently. Well, <laughs> you both know how to play this uh, crooked game that we're going to foister on you, huh? I've heard something about it. Yes, you. now you're partners, and remember, we want one answer between you. In the race for the $1,000, the first couple won $250, and the secret word is sign. Now, you selected a dictionary quiz, and you ought to be pretty good at this. 
May I consult with my partner? Yes, you certainly can. Partner, how about, say... You the hmm? boss, Felipe. I'm going to go $100. Yes, you go to $100. You're $100? You're the boss. That's what I said. Okay, what is the word meaning a hater of mankind? It's a hedonist. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. It's misanthrope. You're correct. Cynic, misanthrope. You now have $50. All right, so don't get good. discouraged. you got no, three no. more chances. You want to go for 90 50 60 What is it? $90, Scott. What does the word obese mean? Obese means... O-B-E-S-E. Means very fat. That's right. Fat, stout. That's correct. That's right. I like it. You now have $140. Now, what do you want to go for? $80, Scott. $80. Yes, sir. What is a talisman? And I don't mean the rose by that name. A talisman is a medallion or a medal uh, of some significance. Well, all right, it's a good luck charm. We'll, uh, I would say that's close enough. You now have $220. Yeah, now what are you going to go for, 70 $70 is satisfied. If maternal means pertaining to a mother, what is the way that means pertaining to a brother? Fraternal. Fraternal is right. Mm. And you wind up with $290. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Groucho, just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mrs. Sylvia Feldman to be on the show. And her partner is Mr. A. Purvis Pullen. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Betcha Life. Say the secret word and divide $101. It's a common word, something you see every day. Uh, Sylvia Feldman, since we have to start someplace, I'll start with you. Where are you from, Sylvia? Uh, New York City, but I've been here since 1940. Oh. No, you're from New York, eh? Whereabouts in New York? A uh, little bit of every place in New oh, York. Oh, well, that's a nice part of New York, I think. <laughs> it says here, what, I don't believe this, but it says here that your name is Pervis Pullen? Yeah. A, a, a Purvis Pullen. A, oh, a Purvis. Well, that's an error, isn't it? Uh, no. no, that's my real name. Actually, that's your name? Yeah, A Purvis Pullen. Oh. Mm-hmm. Well, that's ridiculous. There's nobody named A Purvis Pullen. Right? <laughs> Let's take your name one hunk at a time. Now, what does the A stand for? Well, the A stands for A. You just A. You have no name at all. You're just an initial, is that it? Uh-huh. A Purvis. Uh-huh. They call me Purv for short. The Purv? Purv. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. How about pulling? Does, does that stand for anything? Well, pulling is... Taffy, a, isn't it? No, pulling is a is an English name. It dates back to 1150. That's toffee AD. in English, isn't it? No, uh, pulling is in, in English, it means chicken. It's a, like the pullet. It means chicken, pulling. You're too tall for a chicken. <laughs> you could be an ostrich. I don't see how you could... Can you cackle? You mean make a noise like a chicken? Cackle. Isn't that what cackle is? Huh? Yeah, you can. Huh? Yeah. Let's try it. Yeah, let's hear you cackle, huh? <laughs> well, Pavis, that's that's magnificent. <laughs> you could pass for a rooster without any trouble at all. <laughs> Keep a sharp eye out, Pavis. You may wind up in a fricassee. <laughs> it's a pretty hungry-looking crowd out there. <laughs> what sort of work do you do, Pavis? Well, uh, I'm a toy salesman. That is, I'm the sales manager for the Shuko toys. They're little imports from Nuremberg, U.S. owned Germany. And the company that I work for is the Sacco Dietrich Company in San Clemente, California. Oh. Well, when you open the door, when, what do you do? Do you cackle and say... Here comes pulling. Well, sometimes I do, but I just I just show my wares. I have little little toys, and uh, there's different kinds of toys. Like for instance, <laughs> is that any good? Yeah, that's good. It's a rooster. <laughs> well, well, yours wasn't a rooster, huh? Mine was a hen. It was a hen. Yeah. Huh? Well, how does it? And the rooster. <laughs> that way, it was up. Well, that's not much better than mine, huh? No. <laughs> well, Sylvia, let's find out some more things about you. Do you do you have a job, or are you busy uh, keeping house? Uh, I'm a party consultant, Gracho. You're a party consultant? That's well, right. Which party do you consult, the Republicans or the Democrats? Huh? I uh, plan parties where people have fun. Well, can't they do that without your help? Uh, they can have the party, but they might not do it as correctly, as, and uh, they'd have a great deal more anxiety if they did it themselves. I see. Well, say I want to throw a real big party, someone around 310 pounds. No, uh, uh, 
some uh, big party with about a hundred kids, psychers, clowns, elephants, you know, the worst. Yes, well, once we I might decided... even go as high as twenty dollars. Now, what would I get for my for what would I get for my money? For twenty dollars, you'd get a lot of conversation, but if you wanted to do it right, you'd have to spend about from three to five hundred dollars. You're kidding, aren't you? No. Five hundred dollars for a hundred children. I can get. Did I say a hundred children? That's what I thought you said. That's five dollars a head, huh? Well, uh, Sylvia, you may not realize it, but uh, will you uh, cackle again for me? <laughs> That's what your party is. It just laid an egg. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but is that all you do, cackle like a chicken? I, I'm not, uh, you know, underemphasizing the importance mm. of that. Or well, appreciate. I think it's a magnificent talent. But uh, I, I, as a child, I started imitating. I, I do about 375 birds, and 75 animals. Fourteen snakes and five insects. Well, can you imitate a bee? A bee? Yes, I can do a bumblebee. It was a bee. <laughs> he even killed it for you, huh? <laughs> well, you certainly know a lot about the birds and the bees, Bavis. <laughs> and what you've learned in the woods should come in pretty handy in the city. <laughs> Can you trumpet like an elephant? Oh, I can cackle like a, a gobble, like a gobble, turkey gobbler. Well, that's hardly an elephant, but give us a hand. <laughs> can you imitate any animals besides your husband, Sylvia? <laughs> no, no, but I can plan any parties that you'd want to have. <laughs> Well, you have a one-party mind, I can see that. Huh? <laughs> now, you both know how to play your bet your life, huh? Yes. I presume you do. In the race for the $1,000, the second couple leads with $290. Now, you select the small towns and cities of the United States. I'm going to list six cities and towns all in the same state, and you can tell me in what state they're located. Remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Can you imitate any animals, George? No, I wish I could. Let's see you do a chicken. I can't well, do Well, try, it. try I'm... it. I did a rooster before. I'm no good at these things. At all. <laughs> Go on, tell us. It would sound about like that, I think. Well, try it, huh? What, what, which one do you want? Uh, the rooster, the <laughs> one I just did. Come on. Oh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Of course it's ridiculous, and I'm not an imitator either, but the audience is hungry to hear you do a rooster. <laughs> now, come on. Tail loose with a rooster. <laughs> you did fine. Many a rooster changes sex in the middle of the road. Right? <laughs> All right, now, what do you want to start with, Ten? I don't want you to think that I'm the only one up here with talent. <laughs> He's loaded with talent, but he rarely gets an opportunity to display it, that's all. What are you going to start with? Ten, fifty, or a hundred? Anything. Ninety. Ninety dollars. Here are the towns and cities. Now, you tell me what state they're in. North Hero, Montpelier, New Fane, Rutland, Bennington, and Brattleboro. What state are they in? You want the cities again? Yeah, name them again. North Hero, Montpelier, New Fane, Rutland, Bennington, and Brattleboro. We don't know Gap. Well, you know, there are three very well-known cities. There's Bennington, Brattleboro, and Rutland. It's Vermont. Vermont. Well, I'm surprised I think, at you. I think of the New England cities. You yeah. see, if it had been Rhode Island, you'd have yeah. been able to do it because you imitate a chicken, and uh, <laughs> that's where the Rhode Island red comes yeah. from. Huh? Yeah. Well, you still have fifty dollars. Okay. I used to know a communist in Providence up there. He was called a Rhode Island red. It, it, <laughs> that isn't true at all. I don't know any communist. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What uh, are you going to go for? A uh, hundred. A hundred. Here are the towns and cities. West Kingston, East Greenwich, Manville, Port Tucket, Valley Falls, and Cranston. What is the state? Manville, East Greenwich, Greenwich, I guess it's pronounced, West Kingston, Port Tucket, Valley Falls, and Cranston. New York? No, it's Rhode Island. You should have known that. Well, you now have $25. You're doing really good. Too good. No. $80 you're going to go for? Okay, 80 Here are the towns and cities. Oskaloosa, 
Grinnell, Winterset, Mason City, and Waverly. What is the state? Iowa. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Iowa. $105. Seventy? Seventy. Seventy $70. In what state are these towns and cities? Tallulah, St. Bernard, New Iberia, Shreveport, Farmerville, and New Roads. Oh, that's in uh, uh, Louisiana. That's right. Louisiana is right. And you wind up with $175. Thanks, and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Did a fine job. <laughs> That means that Mrs. Altamare and Mr. Schutz, with $290 in just one minute, get the chance at the $1,000 question. Whether you're steering around a super highway curve, maneuvering through traffic, or parking, if you're driving a new DeSoto, full-time power steering makes driving unbelievably easy. It does all the work of driving all the time. You have all the fun. DeSoto full-time power steering works even when you're standing still. Just try turning the wheels of a car with conventional steering when it's standing still. Or even a 56 model with ordinary part-time power steering. See how much effort it takes. Then try DeSoto's full-time power steering. You'll see it makes driving unbelievably easy. And if you visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealers right now, You'll also see that he can afford to give you a terrific deal on whatever model DeSoto you choose to buy. The reason he can afford to give you a terrific deal is that DeSoto sales this year have already doubled. See about your new DeSoto tomorrow. So make sure you see and drive the new DeSoto. Why, man alive, it's delightful, it's the lovely, it's delirious, it's the living, and it's the latest. Your DeSoto Plymouth dealer will be happy to have you test drive the delightful, the lovely DeSoto. See him about it tomorrow. For the best buy of 56, drive and price a DeSoto before you decide. Here's the winning couple, Groucho, all set for the $1,000 question. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help from the audience. The richest and best-known gold mine now in operation in the United States is located near Lead, South Dakota. For $1,000, what is the name of this famous mine? I don't know. I'd have to take a guess. I don't know. Well, you're allowed to do that. Okay, what is the answer to a decided upon? It's a considered guess. It's, it's called Boulder. No, I'm, I'm sure sorry. It's, it's a that. very famous uh, name, and you'll know it. It's Homestake. Well, never up, never in. Right? <laughs> no, that's right. So that means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. Well, you lost the big money, but they won how much in the quiz, George? Uh, $290. Congratulations, and thanks Thank to you, both Mal, of you sir. and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Out of it, Edgy. next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,500. Don't miss the Chrysler Corporation's big TV show on another network. And don't forget Groucho's television show, brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America, who invite you to visit your neighborhood showroom tomorrow to see and drive the delightful, the lovely DeSoto for 1956. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember... It's delightful, it's the lovely, it's the soda. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Tomorrow is annual safe driving day. Let's all do our part to make driving safer, easier, and more pleasant. Drive carefully. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jack Meekin. This is George Fenneman signing off for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. 
You'll Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world.